الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا الله تبارك الله has made this world it is a pot in which there will be days of goodness, happiness, enjoyment and there will definitely be days of sacrifice, loss where there will be days where you will smile there will have to be days where people will cry where a poet said where in the one house they are celebrating the birth of a child said at the same time in the other house they are mourning the loss of a husband or a wife in this world Allah Tabarakallah has made that where you have your beautiful house and your beautiful shop, very close to that also you have to have the Qabristan. Allah Tabarakallah made where the rose is, there's going to be a thorn. Almighty Allah made in the house where people are healthy and well, there will definitely be someone who is sick. This is a world which is a collection of both. Because it is with both that the exam of this world is created. Had this world been Jahannam, had it been punishment, Allah Tawarukala then says, Walo you ahidullahu nasa bima kasabu. Many a time a person says, I don't know why, on account of what sin Allah is just grabbing me. Almighty Allah says, if Allah really grabbed a person on account of what people have done, then there would have not been a single individual left on earth. Almighty Allah does not grab because this world is not Jahannam, this is not the place of punishment. Neither is the seer paradise. Had it been paradise, there would have been a garden with no wheat. There would have been a garden with no weeds. There would have been a night with no insects. There would have been sleep with no mosquitoes. There would have been enjoyment, only enjoyment. This world is a collection of both because it's called an exam. For the exam, Allah Tabarukullah made it. A mother wants a child. She will have to be ready to go through the difficulties which is called bearing the child, giving birth to the child. There will be times where the child will survive. There will be times where the child will pass away. This is a world where sometimes it's made, sometimes it's not made. And every time when the person wants to ask, but why? Then the answer is within the heart of the individual, that you know the answer. We went to visit one house where someone had passed away. A child had passed away, very young. So the person said that my family is not taking it so well. Can you just mention something? So what came to my mind is that I said, ask yourself a question and you got the answer. I don't have to give the answer. That who gave the child? The answer is Allah. And then the second question is then who took the child? Because normally when a person is grieving, they blame one to blame someone. But no one has that. We don't have the courage. No one has that inside who can say, I blame Allah. You say, who then took the child? Allah. And the third question is, if Allah never wanted the child to live, then why did Allah give the child? How easy it could have been just to say, you will not fall pregnant. Finished. What was the need to give the child and then take away the child? It was because in giving the child and taking away the child, there was going to be an exam. There was going to be an exam to see how close is the servant of mine. That when I take away what is most beloved to her, does she still remain her creators or does she lose trust in her creator? This is a world of sacrifice. Allah Tabarukala in this world created teachers and made us the students. The greatest teacher were known as the Nabi of the time, the Anbiya of the past, 
For us, our greatest was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first jamaat that was around him was known as Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They learned the lesson very well. They were the first students in this class. They taught us how to look at life. How to see it as a place of sacrifice and a place of giving preference to our own desires. They practically showed us what it means to love and how to love. Had we not had them in front, perhaps we would have seen other role models. For the other role models it was this world is a place to become rich. This world is a place to live it up. The more smarter my clothing, the more greater I become in the eyes of people. The more smarter my car, the more beautiful my house. Had we had no role model, we would have been forgiven for thinking that that is why we were sent in this world. Almighty Allah made them the first children in this class. They learned the lesson very well from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That me and you are not in this world to live it up. Me and you are in this world to prove a point. That point we have to prove is to ourselves. And we have to prove to Almighty Allah that we are sincere in this path. We have not come in paradise. We have come to create a paradise. For this reason, ulama have written regarding Sahaba radiallahu anhum. One group was known as the Muhajireen. Allah tabarakta after blessing them with Islam. That's that same Islam that me and you got. But their Islam came with another sabak, another lesson. May Allah give us that ability. We also get this lesson. It comes part and parcel of Islam. It was the lesson of submission. He said when Islam came to them, it came with such qualities. It created a thought in their mind that in this world, my Allah wants me to prove to Allah. For thus they were ready to sacrifice everything. When the command of Hijrat came, they were very wealthy. They had the smartest of houses. It was not easy. Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahib Rahimullah mentions, that just when Allah gave him the chance, so much wealth came because of inheritance and other issues. And his bookshop just started making money. And the house which he always dreamt about, finally he was able to get. He put up the garden how he wanted. He made the wuzu khana how he wanted. He even had a board written. That don't be deceived by the things of this world. Remember before you there was somebody else here. And after you there will be someone else here. He even put that up like how we on our house. We put up ahalan wa sahalan. We put up for amma bi ni'mati rabbika fahaddit. He also put up his frame. His garden was made where I will rest. And then the division of India and Pakistan came. And he had to make a decision now, I will have to leave. But it's not easy to leave when your heart is in something. He says, we knew those people who are making this journey over to Pakistan. He said, we knew it at the borders. The Indian soldiers were not allowing people to take anything. They would look at the bags. If they would see anything of value, even material, they would take it away. He said, the best idea we could get is whatever wealth we had. Take it to the jeweler. Have it made into jewelry. My wife will wear the jewelry. Because those soldiers will check up the bags. But they will not have that courage to look at the woman. As for the house, he said, as he stepped out, he said, Oh Allah, it's going to be very hard to make the step. But I ask you, will you remove the love of this house from my heart and whatever I have to sacrifice? Whatever. He said it was the kindness of Allah. We don't have to wait for that day to come where either our grave will tell us, let's leave. Or conditions in the world will tell us, it's time to pack up. 
We are reaching a stage in life where we don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years, 20 years, even 5 years. There might be things happening in the Islamic world. We might have to make decisions. If our heart is stuck in our world, then that lesson which the Muhajireen gave when they had to leave for the sake of Islam, it will be regarded as a lost lesson. May Allah make it, we can take that lesson. We enjoy our houses while we got it. But we don't put our heart in the house. We are able to say tomorrow if I have to make that step outside for Allah, I will make it because what I'm leaving behind was one day going to leave me behind. It was never meant to stay. He says as soon as his leg went out of the house, Allah removed that love. He felt no pain. When they reached Pakistan, said after a while, at the beginning they were getting paid by the government, then their job was finished. Now times were tight, a lot of family members were coming. Finally he said to his wife, now the jewelry, that was the only, only wealth they brought over from India. He said, the jewelry, now we will have to sell it. He took it to the jeweler. The jeweler looked at it and he said, but this is fake. But this is fake. A normal person at that moment would have had a heart attack. This is the last thing of my life. He said, but he had made dua to Allah that removed the love of this from my heart. He says, when the man said it's fake, instead of a scream, he was able to say, inna lillah with a smile, that my Allah really wanted me to sacrifice everything for his path. So even this little that I took, my Allah was going to say, no way, this will also be sacrificed. Question is, how does it become easy for the sacrifice? How was it easy for Muhajirin to walk out of their houses, leaving Makkah, Mukarrama, and all their wealth, all their businesses, reaching Medina, Munawwara, poor and hungry, going through the difficulties of the journey, Yet not one word of complaint. What was it that they were looking at? So this is what we will very quickly try to explain. On every step of the life of these Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they had one thing which they called, I am doing a business deal with my Allah. When we visited a house where a child had passed away, from amongst the advices I gave, this was one. That you might not know it when I ask that why do you think then Allah took away the child? Was it Allah just gave it but he never wanted the child to live? Then Allah would not have given the child. Or was it that Allah wanted to make a business deal with you? This deal is so valuable. But me and you, our inside condition is such that many a time, when money comes into the hand of the child and then the father says, but oh my son, if you trust me, let me take this wealth and invest it somewhere else for you. Then the child says, but daddy, I want my money. And the father says, don't ever think your father is going to steal your money. You don't really need it now. I need to put it where you will need it. There is certain business transactions me and you will be doing with Allah. Sometimes Almighty Allah in His kindness makes us go through the deal by taking away what we love in this world just so that we can get something in the year after. In that house what I mentioned was Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke a lot about the day of Qiyamah. And a lot about one of the greatest wealth which an individual will have on that day is a child that passed away before reaching Buluh. There was a muhaddis of the era, very great scholar of hadith. He had seen a dream. On the day of Qiyamah he was walking. And many students he had thought, but they were not helping him on that day. Because the day of Qiyamah is such that everyone will be in his own alam. Your husband, your child, your father, your brother, they will not be there to help you on that day. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي 
when man will run. So he saw himself on the plains, moving around. Then he saw these young children in front, they had water. And he saw whoever is drinking from their water, their life is changing. That heat is going away, that fear is going away, that's the water he needed. But to every child when he's coming, the young boy is running away. He becomes frustrated chasing so many, then he screams to one boy, that what's wrong with me? You got water for everyone, you can't give me. And one boy stopped, he looked up and he said, Uncle, you are not my father. And then the muhaddis woke up. What it meant was that I have been sent to find my father on the plains of Tayama. This is a trust my father had sent from before. I have been waiting for years and years. Rasulullah sallallahu said, that child that passes away before reaching maturity will wait at one of the doors of paradise. He will not allow others to enter the door. The door itself and others will say, move out. He will say, I will not move until I find my father and I let him first enter, then the rest of you all can come. That amanat to get in that world, the muhaddis woke up. On his tongue he came, he said, Allah, I really need someone on the day of Qiyamah to be looking for me. So he said, Allah, I won't mind if you take away one of my children. And he said it, and perhaps he forgot about it. His child grew up, his child finished Quran, his child's jalsa was going to take place. The child was very close to the age of becoming baligh. And the child just passed away. People came for Tazia. Amongst them was one student who said, Ustad, I see you crying also and I see you smiling also. Will you not tell us the secret behind your smile? He said, how many years ago I had made a business deal with Allah. And over the years I really thought that the deal was not heard. He says, now I understand Allah heard my deal. When a child is taken away, that is the greatest grief for a woman. At that time, understand that Allah does not take except that Allah wants to give. Be happy with the business deals you are doing. Among the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who made the hijrat, a famous Sahabi radiallahu anhum is known as Suhaib Rumi. He is known as Rumi because he was captured in the Roman lands. He was brought to Mecca, Mukarramah as a slave. Then in the slave world, there are times where a person is able to buy his freedom from his master, Suhaib Rumi radiallahu an. He was able to do a lot of business after getting his freedom. Allah tabarakallah to put a lot of blessings, he became very wealthy. And then the call of Islam came, Suhaib Rumi radiallahu an accepted he was persecuted, then permission was given for the hijrat, and he decided to leave. On the way, the people of Mecca Mukarrama had made their pledges. They had called ruffians to prevent anyone going. So Heib Rumi radiallahu anh, was surrounded. He was a master in fighting. Many people gathered around him, so he said to them that you see, as long as these arrows do not get finished. And you are well aware when I shoot, I do not miss. As long as these arrows do not get finished, you all are not going to get close to me. I will fire and fire and fire and many of you will lose your lives. He says, after I have completed my arrows, then the sword will come out. I will continue fighting until I die. Many of you will lose your lives. So why don't you let me go? They said to him that when you came to Mecca, Mukarrama, don't you remember how poor you were? Then you came here and you became very wealthy. So you're taking the wealth of our country and now you want to go over. So hey, Brumi said, is it my money that you worried about? He said, whatever I got on this animal of mine, allow me to put it on the ground. Whatever I got at my home, I will promise you, you can take all of that also. You will take whatever I have managed to carry, because normally when you're leaving, 
What you can't carry, you bury. That maybe one day in life I will come back. No one knows where I buried it. And what is the most valuable and you can, you take it with. He said, what's in these bags is my entire life. And what's buried in a certain part of my house. He says, besides that, I do not own anything. Would me and you have ever made a step like this? For the sake of our deen, we are that weak person in the class. They made deals with Almighty Allah. Me and you are scared to make the deal. Sometimes Almighty Allah in His kindness, He just makes the deal on our behalf. He regards us as the child who can't sign. And Almighty Allah makes the signature. It is called difficulty we are put through. If ever that comes, here the Sahabi is making that step. Such an exam, may Allah save us, we are not ready for such exams. But yes, this world is a collection of good days and difficult days. When the difficult day comes, if someone views it as though my Allah signed on my behalf, then even in tears you will be able to cry. While crying over the loss of a beloved, you will smile because you will be seeing him in Jannah. Rasulullah said, you lost the child when the child was young. He said, what are you worried about? Ibrahim alayhi salam is the father. Sarah is the mother. They will continue looking after your child in the gardens of paradise until one day they will return your amanat to you. See the signature of Almighty Allah on our behalf. And a person who was crying yesterday will start smiling. We are not a nation that falls in depression. We are not a nation that when we see loss, we take it as others. If there's a loss here, we see it as a gain there. So Hebrumi told them that in a certain part of my house you will dig. You will move towards this direction. You will find what is buried there. That is my entire treasure of life. They were very happy. They understood his promise is strong. Arabs would not speak lies. They went, they dug exactly as he said. They found the gold that they wanted. They were very happy. But the historian writes, and even more happier than them was Suhaib Rumi. Because he was happy that I am able to save my Iman and Islam and to meet with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so Heib Rumi had actually was waiting for the opportunity. He heard of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and Rasulullah getting ready to go. He was thinking if they going and he gets permission, he will also try to meet up with them. But because he was now surrounded, he was unable. Finally, when he managed to get away from these ruffians, he carried on his journey. He reached when Rasulullah had already reached Kuba. He was in the house of Kulthum ibn Hadam radiallahu an Abu Bakr radiallahu an saw him. Abu Bakr radiallahu an came running to him and said, Suhaib, Suhaib, Mubarak to you, O Suhaib. And then he said that most beautiful word. May Allah put that word in my heart, in your heart. That whenever we will see some difficulty in life, in our ear this word can ring out. He said, O Suhaib, what a wonderful deal you have done. So Heib radiallahu anh looked up at him and said, What deal are you talking about? Abu Bakr radiallahu anh smiled and he said, Why should I say, Let us go and ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly. They came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Suhaib, Radiallahu anh, when he saw him, O oh Abu Yahya, may you be most blessed, Mubarak. What a wonderful deal you have done. Allah is so happy with your transaction. He said, I asked, O oh Nabi of Allah, what transaction are you speaking about? I have not done any business in the last few days. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jibrail alayhi salam brought me the message. That you had done a business deal with the youngsters of Quraysh. It was regarding you that Almighty Allah had mentioned. But look at the verse of Quran. Almighty Allah did not say, and Suhaib is the one who did this. 
Almighty Allah said, and from amongst men, meaning from the people of this ummah, there will be many. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ Amongst the people are those who sell their own selves. اِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Searching for the happiness of Allah. Amongst the people are those who sell their own selves. Searching for the happiness of Allah. وَاللَّهُ رَؤُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ And Allah indeed is most kind with His servant. Look at this verse. It was an exam which Suhaib radiallahu went through. It was an exam that took away all of his wealth. What he had buried and he thought no one will find. One day I'll be able to go back and take it out. Just like how Mufti Shafisa thought. That if I am losing everything, at least my gold, that my wife will be wearing one thing I got. He left his house, just like how Mufti Shafi Sahib said, I am leaving my house. But Suhaib Rumi radiallahu anh, had it in his mind, but what's buried, at least that will be looked after. What I'm taking on my animal, at least that will be looked after. But by Almighty Allah, Allah wanted, no, I want to take everything away from you. Everything. It would have been that Suhaib radiallahu anh, could have lifted up his hands and says, Oh Allah, what did I do? What did I do wrong that you took away everything from me? I was making the hijrat. When Almighty Allah praised, Almighty Allah did not say, And Allah is most severe in punishment. Almighty Allah said, Wallahu raufum bil ibad. And Almighty Allah is most compassionate with His slaves. Most compassionate. Ulama have mentioned when a person is finding difficulty in sustenance, is finding doors are just not opening up. He just needs a little bit more to come in his life. He said, there's a verse of Quran, Allahu latifum bi'ibadihi yarzuqu man yasha." وَهُوَ الْقَوِيُّ الْعَزِيزِ Seventy times a person who reads this, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anh, said seventy times a day, an individual reads this dua, Almighty Allah will indeed open up. I had mentioned this to quite a few people, and by the kindness of Almighty Allah, how many came back after a while and they said, How Allah opened? But the meaning of this dua is the unique thing. That person who's reading it is a person who at the moment found the world tight. He found his business not giving results. He finds or he wants to know why is Allah doing this to me? The beginning of this ayat is Allahu Latifum bi ibadihi. Latif is very similar to Rauf. That Allah is most delicate with his servant. Meaning if you feel that things are tight, things are difficult, then remember Allah has not broken anyone. How the individual is delicate with that petal and he knows how much to turn and when to turn. Almighty Allah says, your Allah is just as delicate with you. Allah understands how much an individual can manage. Allahu latifum bi'ibadi. As for sustenance, yarzuqu man yasha. Allah gives to who He wishes. Your days will also come when you will get lost. There will also be an exam. And there will be days when things will be a little tight. But Allah is not punishing. Allah is most compassionate. Allah is most kind. It's only me and you sometimes we forget that in this world we have come to do business. We have to do such business that gets us the year after. Sometimes we think our husbands were only meant to do business. So if we are not doing business, then we can't expect to be purchasing the palaces of the year after. To be purchasing the thrills of the year after. The enjoyments of the year after. Allah Tabarukala in His kindness, sometimes He says, Oh my servant, if you don't want to start the transaction from your side, I will start it from my side. It is there where difficulty sometimes visits an individual. It is not a punishment. It is a signature of Almighty Allah, which got a lot of pay. 
Because when Almighty Allah pays, Allah Tabarukala really pays. So Ibn Rumi radiallahu anh says, Hearing the praise of Almighty Allah, I went out of my mind. But Almighty Allah left this praise for every one of us by saying, Wamina nas, that from the people are those who are ready to sell themselves to Almighty Allah. He says, At that moment, the thought was not in my mind that I had sacrificed all of my wealth. He said, I was so happy on that moment. It was as though all my wealth came into my life. When the transaction with Almighty Allah is remembered, a lot of difficulties become easy. It was the time of Umar radiallahu an that there was a severe drought in Medina Munawwara. Umar radiallahu an was the Khalif. And because of the severe droughts, the farmers, their crops were not giving what it's supposed to give. People on the streets were not finding what they needed. The prices of everything went very, very high in the market. Umar radiallahu anh wrote to his governors. First, Zaid bin Sabit radiallahu anh was sent around Medina Munawwara to go what we call take a census, go around and find out who got, who hasn't got, how much is needed. Umar radiallahu then wrote to his governors far away, some in Egypt, Amr bin al-As, some in Sham, Muawiyah radiallahu an, that whatever ghalla, grain, wheat, barley, whatever you can purchase, at whatever price, buy it, load it on the camels, with your military, with your soldiers, send it immediately. Muawiyah radiallahu an, Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah, Amr bin al-As, every one of them went out of the way. Camels and camels and camel loads were being sent to see to the droughts in Medina Munawwara. Many rich people in Medina Munawwara on their own also were opening up their hearts. On that day, again, how many a time he had stood out in the past, Usman radiallahu an was going to stand out again. But he was going to give a message to me and you. That if you understand the transaction you are making with Almighty Allah, then you don't always see that you're losing. Rather you see sometimes you are gaining. And this word of a business deal with Allah, if you can bring it in yourself, if I can bring it in myself, it makes life very easy at the time when there's a problem with inheritance. And one party has to say, okay, no problem. If a little money has to be lost, I'll take the loss. Because that individual will not see it as a loss. He will see it as a gain. When there's a problem and something has to be sent, that individual will not see it as a loss. He will see it as a gain. When there's some difficulty and what the person wanted doesn't come, Aisha radiallahu anha once said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her that I had heard that some animal was sent today, a small goat. So he said, he came home and he said, Oh Aisha, of that goat that was given as a gift today, is there anything today remaining? Because during the day when beggars would come, Aisha radiallahu anha would give. She was taught to give. So on that day she replied, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I had given away so much, so much, so much today that it is now only the shoulder of the goat that's left. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what a unique, what a unique teacher he was. How he changed her sentence. She said, it is only the shoulder that's left. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, rather, it is the entire animal that has now been left saved except the shoulder meaning we will now sit down and eat of the shoulder that will become our body and that will go away but what you had already put in your account of the year after that will remain your amanat fresh until the day you will find it you will find a child who passed away before bulu has an amanat you will find your wealth as an amanat you will find your tears as an amanat. You will find your ethar, sacrifice, preference to somebody else as an amanat. Whatever we lose in this world, nothing has ever been lost. 
Usman radiallahu an, he also ordered, he had also made unique business deals on that day. He had also told his agents, whatever grain you can get, whatever grain, at whatever price. So when the animals that were sent by the Khalifa came, that was already sent to the Baytul Mal. But that was what is called the government money. Government money is very easy to spend because it's no one's personal wealth. Usman radiallahu anh's animals now entered Medina Munawwara, covered and covered with grain, because the price in the market was high at the moment. Traders surrounded Usman radiallahu anh, each one saying, I want to buy, I want to buy, and then he will add his little profit and he will start. Umar radiallahu anh himself came, and he said, do not sell to these people the Baytul Mal, the Muslim treasury wants to. It's like you have the government says, and when government pays, they're ready to pay any amount. Usman radiallahu anh said to the traders, some one person said, I will give you double of what you purchase it at, because they were getting that money in the market. Somebody else said, I will give you three times the amount. And different people, Usman radiallahu anh just smiled, he said, that's very little, the thing in the market is high at the moment. No matter what people mentioned, Usman radiallahu anh was still saying, I want more, I want more. Umar radiallahu anh came and even said to him, how much do you think you're going to get for what you have? And then Usman radiallahu anh went, he went to a center of the market, he had the camels lie down, and then he sent out his men to make an announcement, that whoever does not have in his house something to eat, then let him meet Usman in the market. Beggars, Poor people, sometimes even what is called rich, but at the moment there's nothing in the house. We saw at a time when there was the looting in Durban, even rich families we heard about, they also needed milk and bread, ready to pay whatever has to be paid. I need my milk and my bread. Said, make the announcement that Usman is distributing, whoever has nothing in his house, come. It is very easy to read the incidents of the masters of the past. May Allah Taala let let us take lesson also. They understood we got a few days to do business with Almighty Allah. Then we are going to go to our accounts. When you're going to open that account, you will want to see a bank balance. You will want to see lot. But for us to be able to see lot on that day, it means we have to sacrifice a little today. Usman radiallahu anh started distributing. Few of the people who had made the offer to him came and said, now what happened? You were looking, looking so much for someone to give you a high amount. And now you went the complete opposite. You're just giving and giving for free. Usman radiallahu anh says, my Allah made a promise to me that he will pay me for what I have spent 70 up to 700 times. He said, you were only offering me two, three, four, five times. Perhaps you would have gone up to ten and you would have said, I can't afford anything more. He said, I had received a promise from my Allah that it will start at time seventy and it can go up to seven hundred. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ Again, Almighty Allah did not take anyone's name. Almighty Allah said the example of those people who spend in the path of Allah. And then Allah Taala said it's like that one corn. It's like that one ear that when it opens up in the farm, then you find hey, there's another seven. And in each one there's another ten. And it just carries on, carries on, carries on. Usman radiallahu anh said I made a deal with my Allah. My prophets will be starting at time seventy. And who knows, perhaps it can go up to 700. He says, and my Allah does not ever lie. Whatever was brought, which he had purchased at a very, very high amount, everything was given. The poor was given. Those that were rich, but they did not have at that moment grain in their house, he was not going to take money from them. Then he had his agents to go to the house of widows. Because he knew the widow will be shoe shy to come herself and say, I also need. People were knocking at the doors of widows. The anaj, the grain of Usman radiallahu anh was being put in front. 
These leaders, these teachers of ours gave us a message that we are in this world to do business with Almighty Allah. When man does with Allah, Allah gives back in this world lot. But as I mentioned, this world is not paradise. This is not the real place to get it back. There is another world coming which is empty but everything is very fertile. You just drop one seed and you will have an entire garden. Allah Tabarakullah in His kindness as the father sometimes takes away the cash from the hand of the child. Although the young boy is crying and he feels, Daddy, how can you do this to me? And the father just smiles and says, Don't you trust your father? Me and you, may Allah let us learn this lesson. Don't we trust Almighty Allah? When Allah takes an exam, takes us through an exam, when Allah takes from us what is beloved, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when an individual is t- tested, Almighty Allah says to the angel, فَبَتُّ ثَمَرَةَ فُعَادِهِ I have taken away today the fruit of his heart. Meaning that which is most beloved to him. I have taken away, either it means, in some narrations, mention is made of Habib Atay, what is most beloved, meaning his eyesight. Sometimes it is a child, sometimes it is a spouse, sometimes it is a car, sometimes it is a phone. It could be something big, it could be something small. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the test can go very high. He said the test can be sometimes so small that it is just a pun that pricked the individual, a thorn. He said, but for every test Allah is going to pay back. For every test Allah is going to pay. He said there is not even a thorn prick except that Almighty Allah makes it as a means of benefit to the slave. Nabi Wasallam found someone with a fever. He said, don't criticize fever. Because Allah has made this fever as a means to make you clean of every sin. No difficulty in this world except that there is going to be some benefit. What a unique business with Allah. What a unique transaction. Almighty Allah says to the angel, I have taken away the most beloved of my servant. So I want you to listen what my beloved servant is saying. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the individual... So only so much says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un That I belong to Allah. Just so much. Almighty Allah already says to the angel, Build for my servant a palace in paradise. It's not a room. This is not a house. This is a paradise. He says, and put the name in front of it, Baytul Hamd. This is the house of the one who really, really, really praised his Allah. When that angel is listening so well to our words at the time of an exam, let us not just say, Inna lillah and conclude the transaction. Almighty Allah pays a lot. Whenever we find our heart in pain, that is the time to make the best deals with Almighty Allah. That is the time to make dua. Because those duas are going to carry us very, very, very far. That is the time to say, Allah, for the sacrifice I have gone through, I ask you to now do this and that. Ibrahim a.s. was told, now you will leave your child and the mother of your child. He had to leave Hajar and the young Ismail a.s. with one bag of dates, a little water. He had to leave them after waiting so many years for a child. He had to leave them in a barren land, on a road where there was there was no road, far from the road behind a mountain. Ibrahim a.s. continued his journey away from them until when he reached a point where he could not see them. Had it been me and you at that moment, we would have just started crying. We would have fallen in depression. Ibrahim a.s. was going to teach us when Almighty Allah makes a pinch in the heart, this is the time to make business with Allah. Allah Tabarukullah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ Ibrahim, That don't ever forget the time when Ibrahim alayhi salam made his du'as. 
وَالدُّعَازِمِيد He said, رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا Behind him was a barren land. But he was making business. So he was going to say, Allah, what's behind me? This must not be barren anymore. Make this a city of peace. What we see in Makkah Mukarramah today was the dua of Ibrahim a.s. of yesterday. When his dua could make a barren land a city of peace, he taught us if you're doing business with Allah, ask for a lot. Ask for your own world. Ask for the world of your families and beloveds. Ask for your akhirat. When difficulties come, the ummah has been taught. We do not see it as a difficulty. We see it as the beginning of a business deal with Almighty Allah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ Amongst the people are those who have made their deals with Almighty Allah, who have sold themselves ibtigha'a marabati Allah, searching for the pleasure of Almighty Allah. May Allah tabarakallah make us all from amongst those people. May Allah tabarakallah make every difficulty for us a source of great happiness, a source of solace. May Allah tabarakallah let us stand up. Our Sahaba radiallahu anh stood up. When they got, they made the shukar of Allah. And when it was taken away from them, then even in their sabr they were found smiling.